Zeph Joseph was talented, but he wasn't always the easiest athlete to work with. Uh, in fact, there's one thing I remember that absolutely drove me crazy and, and at cross country races. Um, Zeph was always the last athlete to the line and that's never a, a pleasant position for a coach to be in, uh, standing there minutes before the start of a race wondering if your star athlete was going to show up. But he would always show up and uh, kind of nonchalantly stand on the line while the starter gave the instructions. And the gun would go off and the runners would tear off down the course, everyone except for Zeph. He'd stand there for what seemed like minutes uh, to me, but it was probably only about a second. And then he'd click his watch and uh, start on his way. Zeph, if by the mile you weren't already back in the lead, I would have probably strangled you. Um, <laughs> but that, that was one of the little idiosyncrasies of, of him as an athlete. And, and we learned to deal with it, but um, it did drive me crazy. Because you were there for what were some of the absolute best days of my career, and you were also there for some of the worst. Among the best days, you know, I, I count as your double runner-up finish at Nationals in Texas to another Olympian, um, your National Co-Athlete of the Year performance in the cross country in Ohio, um, you in the opening ceremony of the Athens Olympics carrying St. Lucia's flag into the stadium. Um, those were amazing. Uh, and, and among the worst, of course, that Monday morning in September when I turned on my phone and had a voicemail from Jacksonville Traffic Homicide um, letting me know that you and your teammate, roommate Russ, had been struck uh, by a car while doing your morning run and were being transported to the hospital. All of the days and weeks in the hospital and, and the long year, uh, right up until that, that day, almost a year later when we lost Russ, um, you were amazing. Uh, and, and even though I'm proud of you for all of those athletic accomplishments, I'm even more proud of you for the kind of friend and, and teammate and man that you were over that subsequent year. So for these reasons and many more, it is both an honor and a privilege for me to introduce you, Zephyrinus Joseph, as the newest member of the University of North Florida Athletic Hall of Fame. Congratulations. check my time. Still on solution time, so it's good morning in Jacksonville. Good morning to you all. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, first off, I, I think I'd like to thank, um, I grew up as a Catholic, so I'd like to definitely thank God for giving me this opportunity to be here and also to be a member of a great family, and that's UNF. I'd like to also thank my coach who was on the screen there, Coach Mark Van Alstein, because he was the one who recruited, who recruited me from um, Central Arizona College, brought me over here. I'd like to thank my family. I brought my family over with me. My cousin, Victor, his son, Chris. My friend, who's a teacher. She just retired 30 years ago. Teaching. She just retired after 30 years teaching in Jacksonville. Her husband is a professor here. My wife, beautiful Kel Joseph. I brought those with me. And my teammates, my assistant coach, Lindley, Joe, Chris, Matt, and Sean, and their husband. Those are my cross-country teammates. Without them, Without them, I wouldn't be here, okay? So thank you all, and the people who organized the event, I would like to thank you guys. Without you, we would not be Hall of Famers. There are those working in the shadows. Thank you guys for such a great job. Um, let's go. Yes, yesterday, Mike again. No. <laughs> okay, it's back again. Um, yesterday night, really reminded me of the reason why I love UNF and the city of Jeville. The treatment I received from my teammates proved to me how much I was loved and I'm still loved. All right? I'm still loved by those who call me, who we call teammates. I realized that I was indeed surrounded by brothers and sisters, not just teammates, brothers and sisters. 
Yes, they definitely got me drunk last night, <laughs> which <laughs> I, <laughs> they said they wanted me to stutter when I came up here this morning, so they got me drunk last night, and indeed was drunk, okay? They are the family that I, that I have, and indeed, they treated me as such. My journey as a runner started in this beautiful country called St. Lucia, and I would enjoy you guys to come visit one day. It's beautiful, all right? I was a student at a secondary school, Miku Secondary School, and they finally brought in a PE teacher. Now in St. Lucia, corporal punishment is legal. That means you don't do what she tells you to do, you will get punished, all right? So he had us run for four miles. Now I didn't run around because I was this poor kid. I only had like two shirts and a pants. I didn't want to sweat in those. So I said, I'm not doing this. He was like, no, nah, because you're going to get punished. So I was actually the last athlete, uh, last student to leave but I ended up coming back second. It wasn't a risk, just we ran for four miles, it came back in second. And I fell in love with running. I started reading up on running. I would, any book I get, I used to leave my bag on the bus, it would take it home to like three miles, which I thought, thought was like 30 miles. And I would run from school to my home. And that's how I trained. Then I represented, I took part in my first school marathon, which is just a road race, probably six miles. Came in third, the following year I came in second. Went to, um. Junior Games in St. Lucia won. I represented St. Lucia at the Carifter Games in um, 1994. I was second overall. That would make me the second best in the Caribbean, which is like from Jamaica down to Trinidad. Um, in my senior years, when I was like 20, I went to Maracaibo, and I met this St. Lucian who lives in Arizona, Dominic Johnson, who um, spoke, we spoke, and then he got me a scholarship to Central Arizona. I had two pretty, good years at Central Arizona, and that's where Coach Mark Van Alstein found out about me. I came to visit UNF. One of the reasons why I chose UNF, I'm sorry, one of the reasons why I chose UNF was because of the proximity to St. Lucia. It was too much of a hustle to get to Arizona. So I said, I'm going to Florida. This is the closest to St. Lucia. I came to Jacksonville, but when I came to visit, I fell in love with the campus, all right? It's green area, close to the beach. Not as beautiful as mine, I'm sorry. But they're still beach, all right? So I fell at home. I love UNF. And from the time I stepped foot at UNF, I've been treated as family, OK? So here I am at UNF 2000 and 2001. I had a pretty decent cross-country season. And then 2000, it was 2000, yeah, 2001, down to track. I had a pretty decent track season. And then my cross-country season, the first race, we had it in Tallahassee, I won that race. So then we came back, came back on the Monday where myself, Russ and I went for a jog. I was my teammate, he went for a jog. And I was like, I was like 14 minutes into the run, I'm saying, man, it's like 14 minutes and I should be out of, of St. Um, Southside. But Russ is there and this man is keeping me back, you know? So then the next, time I, the next thing I know is that I can't move. So I'm trying to remove this thing, and somebody's telling me, oh, don't move it, don't move it. I'm like, what's up? And it's like, you were struck by a car. So we got struck by a car. Russ, who was behind me, got struck. And he spent about three months, I think it was, or so in a coma. And then what happened is that in 2002, he came back. A year to the date, I won that same event after going for rehab, so I have to say thanks again to the UNF trainers. Those guys did an awesome, awesome, awesome job because my knee was totally gone, and they got me back to perfect shape. But I also had a class, construction class, where I had an incomplete, so I was not able to run for the first set of meets. And then one year to the date, I ran this race, the same cross-country race in Tallahassee. I won as an, as an individual. I was not attached to the team because I was... I didn't make the grade, right? On the Monday, one year to the date, Russ came, he wrote his paper, I proofread it for him. Then he went to have it printed. I think it was in um, one of our classmates, our teammates of our room. Then he came back, he told me he was going for a shower. So we had this double-decker tape. I put in two tapes to listen to the music. So when one is done, it plays the other one. Russ went to the shower. Then I'm waking up and I'm hearing this. Russ is still in the shower. And the music is done, that's like two, three hours. So I went, and I'm hearing this slight moan. So the first impression, excuse me, I thought that myself, I'm like, oh my God, don't tell me Russ is in the bathroom playing with himself. I'm like, damn it, man. <laughs> then I went back to the bed. 
I went back to the bed and like the noise is overpowering. It's overpowering. So I'm like, no, there's something wrong. So I went and I knocked on the door. And I'm saying, like, if you knock on the door and someone is in the bathroom playing with somebody, we'll stop for a few seconds. All right, but the person didn't. So I opened the door and there was my roommate, all curled up in the, um, in the bathtub. I called the police. They came in and they said something about murder. And here I was, I'm like, murder? But I didn't hear what he told the coach, but I only heard murder. But he was actually telling the coach that it doesn't look like murder. So we lost Ross on that day, a year to the date, and I promised him that I would have done my project. So I completed my project, got my grade, back on the team, and I won basically all the races after that dedicated to Russ. We went to nationals, came in for that nationals. I was voted as co arm runner in the NCAA Division II category. So I guess they, they missed that one, but coach, they missed that one on my, um, you all missed that one on my folder, but coach didn't mention it. So I was the first UNF runner to be voted as athlete of the year in the NCAA. Went to the Olympics for my country in 2004, Happened to be the first person to walk into the stadium. The reason that happened is that St. Lucia in Greek is Agia Loka. So that boosts that boost us to the front. Normally, you will not see St. Lucia. Okay? Now, Greece, usually in the Olympics, Greece, and I must mention that there was a coach from UNF. So we had two athletes, a coach and an athlete from UNF. I think it was Dusty Rhodes from Coach Dusty Rhodes, the baseball team coach. Is that, I see someone, is he here? I'm like looking at someone, and I think that's him. <laughs> I know. That's, we met at the hall, because that's the rules. There were two UNF members at two for Olympics. And St. Lucia came in first, so it was one of my best, best, best experience ever. But I always said that I would have given up walking to the stadium first for what happened in the marathon, because I spent two weeks there doing nothing, just eating free food and drinking free, whatever they had. As Coach Dusty, you get whatever you want, no questions asked. So I was like five pounds overweight, Came almost dead last in the marathon. <laughs> I'm sorry I did. I came one before the last in the marathon. But everybody said it was a good experience, and it was a good experience. But um, and that, that's it. I, I'm just happy that the way you all treated me at UNF, I totally appreciate it. I know my family and my friends, my family back in St. Lucia appreciated the way I was treated here. I don't have that much bad memories to speak about. All I have is good fun friends with my friends. And I appreciate them very much. As I said, they're family. And I know you are family here. Unfortunately, they're talking about giving back to the schools. I live in St. Lucia. It's kind of a hustle getting back here. But giving back would not be a problem. You know, I love this. I love UNF. I appreciate everything you all have done for me. You all are part of who I am right now. I'm actually a police officer back home, chasing people all around. So. <laughs> And that's all because of UNF and what I've learned in the States. Being in the States actually opened my eyes to how things are done, because I'm from a very small country where everybody knows everybody. You know, so it's very black and difficult. I'm not in a bad way, though. We're very law-abiding citizens. But like I said, it has opened my eyes, and I appreciate this very much. So I'd like again to just thank everyone and to also congratulate my fellow Hall of Fame inductees. You all, are not, you all have not been forgotten. I don't know who you all are, but we are... <laughs> Well, we are members of UNF, right? So we are brothers and sisters. So again, I would like to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's joy being back in UNF. Thank you very much.